Hello, welcome back to Carpentry College. Today we are going to produce a through mortise and tenon joint and a bridle joint. This is used in when we're producing a panel door like this one. So here is a through mortise and tenon and a bridle joint which is here. And this is the type of door that we're likely to use those joints in. Tools needed for this job are a pencil, a tri-square, a ruler, a 32mm beverly chisel, a mortise chisel, a mortise gauge, coping saw, tenon saw, and a mallet. The aids required for this job are a F clamp, a bench hook, a one in 10 wedge jig. And right, the materials used and needed for this job is one piece of European redwood like this. And it needs to be 700 millimeters long by 45 millimeters wide by 28 millimeters thick. Yeah. When we mark this out, we need to measure and cut as we go. Yeah. So the reason being, we have we need to comment, we need to um, uh, allow for the curve of the saw. This is a curve of the saw. This is what the saw cut makes. This line, that cut line, is what we call the curve of the saws. I'm going to now measure and cut the 295 to length. So there's 295. And then, before I do so, my face side, face edge mark, as I have done previously. Right, so the, the, the next piece we are going to cut now is the uh, 185 mil. So the eight, 185 piece, so we're going to measure 185 millimeters. Mark it. Mark our face side, face edge mark. Like so. And now I'm going to square this line around. So finally, we cut the third one. Again, that'd be 185 millimeters long. So we mark it. I'll do my face side, face edge mark, like so. So now, what we do now is just lay out the, the timber, so how it's going to be made. So we have all our face edges uh, pointing inwards. So that be the vertical, the top, the bottom. And if you notice, all the face sides are opposite. Obviously, this is uh, going towards the middle. And that's how we, we lay it out, just so we can visualize as it's going together. First of all, we need to understand that we've got 295, um, the size of that is 40. I know that this is 45, but what I don't know is the gap between this member and that member. So to, to calculate that, we need to add up 40, 45. So that's 85 times two, that gives us 170. Right, so 170 take away from 295, that gives us uh, 125. So this gap between there and there, this point and that point is 125. So 
I know all my measurements now. So I'm gonna start at the top on the vertical. So what we now have to do is, I've got my 295 piece, uh, piece, uh, straightforward piece of timber. What I need to do is mark the positions where our through mortise is going to be, our bridle, and obviously, obviously this make, we make sure that I've got my 295. And to do that, we do what we call a running total. So, yeah, so now we're going to measure 40 mil. We've got more 40 mil from the top there, from left to right. So 40 plus 45, oh, sorry, but yeah, plus 45 is 85. So I'll mark 85. Uh, in between, right, and then 85 plus 125 gives us two, uh, gives us 210 which is there, 210. 210 plus 45 is 255. And then 40 gives us 295. So it works out exactly. Great. I'm going to square over the positions where my lines, where my through mortise is gonna be and where my bridle is gonna be. We'll square those lines around appropriately. Okay, so now I've marked the positions for, I'm gonna mark them on here, just temporary on the top. So this is my, my mortise is going to be uh, mortise and tenon, and this is gonna be the bridle. I'm gonna put BR like that, so. So this is um, a, a one I've done earlier. So a mortise is basically, this is a mortise, that my, and this is the tenon, you look at that. This is a tenon, this is my mortise. They connect together. This is the joints that we use when we're producing a door of some sort, okay? Right, right, so now I need to set up my mortise gaze to my mortise chisel. And what I'm looking for is the points to be just to the edge of the actual mortise chisel like so. I'll just show you like this. So the points are just at the outer edge of the mortise chisel, the tips, uh, in readiness to mark it onto the said uh, timber. So now I need to set up this mortise uh, gauge so that it's in the middle of the material that I'm going to gauge for, for the tenon, sorry, the mortise I'm going to gauge for. So what I do is just roughly, um, centralize it in between the middle so i'll press i'll get I'll, I'll, everything has got to be from my face side yeah when i start gauging but to set it up with i in this case i'm going to flip it over and this hopefully it can line up now it's just that little bit off you can see there look this that little bit of a fraction that is still okay i can still work with that but all that means is that I've got to make sure that I gauge from my face side. I'll just do that again. So if I mark that there, okay, from the face side, and then I'm just going to flip it over just to see how much out I am. So if you can see those two markings, if you, right, can you see those four marks? So I'm out, I'm off probably about 0.2 of a mil. So I can adjust that just, to, just so that I can get as close. And how we adjust it, it, we just tap, a little tap. Right, I'm gonna try that again at the very top, away from. Okay, that's fine, that's excellent. So now this is centralized in between in the thickness of the material. 
Okay, so this spot on. So make sure you tighten the mortise gauge and I'm ready to start gauging now. I've, I've set up the mortise gauge in the uh, central to the actual thickness of the material and now I'm ready to start gauging. Now, remember, we have our face side marks. So this stock, the stock of the uh, mortise gauge has to touch the, the, the face side. So we're gonna just make an impression and start gauging there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here because the bridle is the same uh, thickness or the same width as the mortise, in fact. So we keep this the same, so we're not changing anything. It's gonna be the same here. So I'm just gonna highlight. So that there, like that. Right, so I just need to turn it over. Still on the face side, and then we're going to gaze, and that should fall into play like that. Should be no over going, just lift that up a little bit. Look how sharp that gauge is, look at that, look. It's so sharp, spot on. Here we are, so this is, I'm gonna put M represents mortise in, and then this is our bridle, this is the, the outer edge coming away here now. So this is gonna be taken away, and then M for mortise, that is there. This is the bridle, all of this is gonna come away. So that's one member done. Okay. Yeah. In doing the, 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 the gauging for the for the mortis, I have to allow for this joint to be wedged. I'm just gonna mark in the wedge holes, yeah, and these are this is gonna be approximately three mil either side of the actual mortis, because that's what's gonna hold the tenon together is going to be the wedges. So before I continue, I need to get back my gauge and just gauge from the wedge hole line to the other wedge hole line. So just, just that there. See me are done. And these are the wedge holes there and here. So now I'm going to just mark a little de uh, reference. So top, TR, top rail, let's say I'm gonna use that as a top rail, and we're gonna call this the bottom be, uh, bottom rail. So this is the ones I'm going to start marking out next, these two. So I'll mark one, and then I'm going to okay, mark Okay, so now I'm going to mark my tenons using my other uh, vertical piece, and just actually literally lay it on top of the top rail, and just make sure it's nice and level here, and just make a little mark here, like so. Then put that away like that. And then I'm gonna square this line all the way around. Right, so now, as I've already marked the top row, I can then position that to the uh, bottom rail and put those together and mark from that one onto the actual bottom rail. So keeping it nice and level, okay? And just literally mark that line across onto the bottom rail like so. Move that one away. So this is the bottom rail I'm marking now. So. I don't need to mark it all, I just need to let a little reference mark there and then a mark inside of here like that. Okay, so we've done the top rail and the bottom is gonna end up like so. Okay, now I'm gonna start gauging the ends of these now, that's what I need to do. So that's the next thing, the gauging. So, same again. My stock, it needs to be on the face side when I'm gauging, so I'm gonna 
Let's mark that there. So this is the top row. So this is going to be cut away. Now I normally put S. S means shoulder line. It just differentiate differentiate what is the shoulder on a tenon. So S represents the shoulder. Okay, so that's one. Then the bridle. Still keeping. Gauging from your on your face side. So just putting that through there like that. So in this case, it's only the middle is going to be removed. This is for the bridle. <coughs> okay, so let's recap. So I've done the top rail, the bottom, uh, The top row for to receive the top member, the bottom row to receive the bridle. And there we have it, ready for pro producing. Yes. So the process now is to start with the mortise first and then the, then the bridle, okay? The reason being, if you, want, if you make a bigger uh, mortise hole than necessary, you always can gain it in the when you're cutting the tenons to fit that mortise, but you can't the other way around. You can't cut your, tenon, your, your tenons first and then produce your, your mortise. So you always do the mortise first and then the tenons. And then in the bridle's case, we always do the bridle first and then the inset for the bridle to suit the, uh, the inset that you've already cut on the bridle. A trade, a trade tip. Now, when you're producing a, a mortise uh, on a bench, it's no, most people put it in the vise, put the timber in the vise, and then when they start doing their mortising, this moves. Yeah, because it moves because whether it's not, whether you tighten it up, all the welly that you're giving it is gonna move. So the best thing to do is to, if you can get one of these, or make one, this is easily done, there's a piece of wood on another piece of wood, probably glued, you probably can put some screws in it. Put it in the vise like so. Yeah, put, squeeze up the vise, and then attach the timber that you're going to mortise to the bench hook. Once we've put this into the uh, vise, we can put our timber against it. You can either use a F clamp, or a G-cram, this is a G-cram, this is the old quite, quite threaded all the way. More short, probably a bit more stronger than that, but these are quick release. Anyway, but they do just as the, just the job. This is, uh, so this is the F-clamp, I just clamp that on there and then I can begin doing my mortising. So now we are going to produce the, the mortise uh, in ready to in readiness to receive the tenon. Now, so we want to start in the middle. One second, a couple of right. So now I'm right. All of it. So you're going to start in the middle, and all you want to do is really go half way into the material. So what I'm doing is chopping the uh, 
the timber away. What, just, I'll, what I'll do, mate, to be fair. Okay. So, just chopping away. Yeah. I'm leaving myself five mil here. I'll, I'll make that clear once once I do this side. So just li look at it. Uh, um, just chopping away, just making sure you hold the chisel upright. Angle just okay. Go on. Right, so now I'm just chopping away. Even making sure the chisel is relatively upright. We're not leaning. Leave about five mil away from the finish line. And what that is for is I can just lift out the pieces that I've already chopped away so without crunching the ends because I'm not quite finished yet. So this is what I'm why I'm saying leaving about five mil from the end, especially when you're mortising by hand like I'm doing now. Okay, so. Also, have a little blow down as well, so that helps, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna just go down a little bit more. That's it. Oh, okay. I get it. All right, so, so wait a minute, let me just see if I can, so you can get a shot at how it looks like inside. Down. That's 30 mil deep, this side. It's about 30 mil, which is enough. That's enough, because the timber's only 45, so it's 30 mil deep at its furthest point, 30 millimeter. So, so now I've gone down at least 30 mil deep. So I've just measured it. I've just, all I've done is use a chisel like this, just put my thumb there and just measure approximately yeah, it's 30 mil, 28 here actually. So now, what I'm going to do now is then just flip it over on this other edge, like so. So I release the cramp and then just turn it over like this, cramp it on again. And then, and then repeat the same. Is it? Yeah, I got, I got you. you could just Right. Say, 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 so I'm going to start again. So start like I did on the other side. So start in the middle and then just tilt the chisel slightly and then just chop away. Holding the chisel verse upright, not leaning to one side, just keeping it upright. And then, as I said, just leave yourself about five more from the end like that. Now I'm going to come round to the other side. So now, right, so now I'm turning it round to repeat the process this way. So just tilting the chisel. Hammering away. Now I'm through here. reached a stage where I've gone, I've uh, chopped the mortise hole, but I need to tidy it up. So I want to show you what I've done uh, so that you can get an idea what you're going to achieve when you have a go. So I've, I've produced, I've gone, I've uh, chopped through now, and this is how it looks like once you've gone through both sides. So now I'm going to this neat and up towards the actual mortise like lines that I've marked. So I'm gonna chop those straight now. So I'm gonna re reposition it into, on against the, the uh, bench hook, like so. So just re reposition it again. So, so, you doing, no? so now I'm going to just finish it off and eating it up, the, the actual mortise hole and go right up to the mark lines that I marked in the first place by holding this chisel straight. And 
come the other side. So I don't go right the way through, I just go halfway, roughly about halfway, or slightly more than halfway, but not right the way through. You're not gonna pierce it through the other side. Right, so all I'm doing now is just clearing some of the, what I've chopped away from the actual mortise hole, just to tidy it up, just lightly, getting rid of them chippings. What I'm going to do now is just neaten up the other side, the back side of this, up to here, and the same going this way. So this again, going halfway, not through, just halfway the material. When I say halfway, just slightly more than halfway, like that. I mean, as a guide, I could really put a bit of masking tape around here, and so that you can, you know, as soon as the masking tape, masking tape reaches the top of there, then you stop. <laughs> So, all I'm doing now is just really cleaning up the shavings, the, the choppings that I've got down inside of here, just, and then also the sides of the mortise. Now, I think I'm done with that now. I'm going to really just shake it out onto the workshop floor, and then I'll show you the next stage. So, all I'm going to do is just that. Uh, 